Welcome to the Asia Crypt 2021 recorded talk of our work on time lock cryptographic assumptions in abelian hidden order groups. My name is Adam van Baarsen, and this is a joint work with Mark Stevens. What are hidden order groups? A hidden order group is a finite group G, such that it is hard to compute a multiple of the order of the group. And preferably, we can sample these groups without the need for a trusted setup. Perhaps the most well-known examples of hidden order groups are RSA groups and imaginary quadratic class groups. In an RSA group, computing a multiple of the order is equivalent to the problem of factoring the modulus n, which is believed to be a hard problem. And the fastest known classical method is the general number field set. On the other hand, imaginary quadratic class groups are historically less studied compared to RSA groups. And the problem of computing a multiple of the order does not reduce to some well-studied computational problem. The fastest known classical method of computing the order is the multiple polynomial quadratic set. One positive aspect of imaginary quadratic class groups is that they do not need a trusted setup, whereas RSA groups do need a trusted setup. Some applications of hidden order groups are verifiable delays functions and time loop cryptographic constructions built upon verifiable delay functions. Recently, it has been shown that um, verifiable delay functions can be built based on the hardness of computing x to the power 2 to the power t for a random element of the group g with less than t sequential operations. However, if the order of the group is known, um, we can reduce this exponent 2 to the power t modulo the group order and can compute this exponentiation, exponentiation in cost logarithmic in the group order. So for these verifiable delay functions, we need the group order to be hidden. Moreover, if the order of a group is known, it's easy to compute E roots where, when E is co-primed to the group order. Um, this can be done simply by inverting E modulo the order of the group and raising the element X to the power D, uh, where D is the, the modular inverse of E. This relates to the hardness of the eat root problem, the strong root problem, and the adaptive root problem. In RSA groups, um, the eat root problem is related to the RSA problem, and the strong root problem is related to the strong RSA problem. Uh, these assumptions are important for cryptographic accumulators, zero knowledge arguments, and, VDF, and the soundness of the PDF constructions that I discussed above. One thing to note is that these reductions hold up analogously if only a multiple of the group order is known. Since this work focuses on abelian hidden order groups, we want to stress some of the difference between cyclic and abelian groups. A, a group is abelian if its group action is commuted. Uh, a, cyc a group is cyclic if there is a single element that generates the entire group. And more precisely, for a cyclic group and n the order of this group, there are phi of n such generators where phi is the order phi function. And so a single uniformly random element is going to be a generator with probability phi n over n. If the order of the group is, a, is, is prime p, then this uniformly sampled element is going to be a generator with probability 1 minus 1 over p, which is very close to 1 if p is a large prime. On the other hand, in the abelian setting, um, there exists multiple elements such that the group is generated by these elements since we are dealing with a finite group. And this holds for n, the number of elements needed to generate the group, equal to the logarithm of the group order. But often a smaller n is going to be sufficient. Moreover, it can be shown that two n uniformly random elements generate the group with probability at least 1 minus 1 over n. So why do we specifically study abelian hidden order groups in this work? Going back to the example of RSA groups, we see that if we pick two safe primes, P and Q, then the subgroup of quadratic residues in this RSA group has composite order and is going to be cyclic. So if we pick a random element in the RSA group, then the square of this element is going to be a generator of the, of the quadratic residue subgroup with overwhelming probability. However, as I mentioned before, RSA groups require a trusted setup. This is because we need the primes P and Q to generate the modulus and to be able to work in the group. But afterwards, we want to forget these primes P and Q because the order of the group needs to be hidden uh, in order for um, 
some hidden order group assumptions to hold. Imaginary quadratic class groups, on the other hand, can be picked, can be sampled without a trusted setup by picking a random fundamental discriminant. Um, and knowing this discriminant does not leak any information about the group order except for its parity. And we can even pick the discriminant in such a way that the class group is always that the order of the class group is always going to be odd, and still that the discriminant does not leak any information about the group order. However, class groups are also going to be cyclic with high probability by the cohen lanstra heuristics. But sampling a random class group, we have no efficient way to check if it is cyclic. Um, so this motivates the study of non-cyclic abelian hidden order groups. And historically, non-cyclic groups have received far less attention in cryptologic research compared to cyclic groups. So this motivated um, our work and the need for new methods to be developed. One main goal of this work is to study and define the abelian hidden order group setting. To do this, we defined this abelian hidden order standard model, which is just the normal standard model, but in the definition of our games, a random group is sampled from some large group family and n random group elements are sampled uh, to act as generators. Moreover, we propose uh, the abelian hidden order algebra group model as a generalization of the algebra group model, where adversaries need to provide an algebra relation for every output group element. And moreover, just as in the abelian hidden order standard model, uh, adversaries receive an explicit group description and a random set of generators in their input. We also generalize the strong algebra group model to the abelian hidden order setting. Um, the strong algebra group model is similar to the algebra group model, but here adversaries have many algebra grounds in which um, they have to output a representation of their output group elements in terms of some elementary algebraic relations, which I'll explain more about later. And just as in the above two models, the adversaries receive some explicit group description and a random set of generators as their input. We adapted the definitions of cryptographic problems to the abelian hidden order setting to be able to study them, since often um, cryptographic problems either um, depend explicitly on the order being known or are explicitly defined for either cyclic groups or for cyclic groups of prime order, for instance. Finally, we study relations between cryptographic problems and abelian, abelian groups of in order in these three uh, newly generalized models. So which cryptographic problems do we study in our work? First of all, we study the multiple order and the hidden order problem, which are simply the problems of computing uh, either the exact group order or a multiple of the group order. Moreover, the low order problem, which is the problem of finding a non-trivial element in the group, which has low order. And the eat root problem, which is the problem of computing an eat root of a random element X, which is sampled from the subgroup of eat powers. The strong root problem, which is the problem of finding a non-trivial root of some random group element. The adaptive root problem, which is the problem of finding a prime root for an element of the adversary's choice, where the random prime exponent is sampled after the adversary picks the group element. The repeated squaring problem, which is the problem of computing x to the power 2 to the power t faster than t squarings for a random group element. The d log 1 problem, which is the generalization of the normal discrete logarithm problem to the setting where we have multiple generators. So it's a problem of giving a representation of a random group element X in terms of some generators G1 up to Gn. And we studied the D log two problem, which is just the um, regular cyclic discrete logarithm problem, but now in random cyclic subgroups of this abelian group uh, G. And, sim and similarly, the CDH2 problem, which is the computational Diffie-Hellman problem in, uh, again, random cyclic subgroups of this abelian group. Okay. 
In this diagram, we see an overview of the reductions that we prove in our work. Um, the green cells are stand for new results of, or new reductions in either the standard model, algebra group model, or the strong algebra group model. The yellow cells stand for partial results um, are either for these reductions from the E root problems. Um, we need to condition that E is co-prime with the group order, or for this reduction from the low order problem, we need to condition that and there is some oracle which provides us with a small prime subdivisor of the group order with non-negligible probability. Uh, the red cells stand for that there is no generic reduction possible from uh, this problem to the other problem. And these mostly follow from the impossibility results for um, a generic computation of discrete logarithms, uh, which is proven by Shoup in 1997. Um, on the other hand, we see that most of the results, most of the new results we proved are reductions from the multiple order problem to uh, almost all of the other problems that we consider in this work. Um, composing these new reductions with known reductions from, for instance, the repeated squaring problem to the multiple order problem, the strong root problem to the multiple order problem, and the adaptive root problem to the multiple order problem, we obtain this whole um, green block of problems which are equivalent to the multiple order problem in either the um, algebra group model or the uh, strong algebra group model. In terms of related work, Damgaard and Kabrowski proved in 2002 the hardness of the strong root problem and the E root problem in the generic group model. Um, they also consider these problems in the hidden order setting where they sampled the random group according to some um, hard group family. But however, since their results are in the generic group model, the techniques they use are mostly incomparable to the, or fully incomparable to the techniques that we use in this work. Um, Katz, Loss, and Q showed in 2020 uh, that the hardness of factoring implies the hardness of the repeated squaring problem in RSA groups in the strong algebraic group model. And it was also in this work that they introduced the, the strong algebra group model as sort of the right model to consider um, this repeated squaring problem. Um, looking a little bit more closely at their result, um, we can see that there is a straightforward generalization of their reduction to a reduction of the multiple order problem to the repeated squaring problem for cyclic groups. Um, and this coincides with the results for RSA groups, since factoring is equivalent to the hidden order problem, which is equivalent to the multiple order problem um, for RSA groups specifically. Finally, Rotem, Segev, and Shahaf, and Rotem and Segev proved that uh, delay functions require hidden order groups in a generic group model for cyclic groups, and that generically speeding up repeated squaring in RSA groups is equivalent to factoring in the generic ring model. Again, since these results are in the generic group model and the generic ring model, uh, the methods they use are incomparable to ours. The algebra group model was introduced by Fuchsbauer, Kiltz, and Loss in 2018, and it's defined as follows. And the tertiary is called algebraic for all of the group elements that it outputs. It also outputs some representation such that it's this output group element X can be written as a product of input group elements to the power of these representation coefficients. Originally, in, in the original paper, uh, the algebraic group model was introduced for cyclic groups of known prime order. And they consider games where an adversary receives um, a description of a group G of a cyclic group G together with some generator and the prime order P. And um, most of the time, this group generator and order were fixed. We uh, generalized this to the abelian setting uh, for groups of unknown order um, as follows. Um, at the start of a game G, an adversary receives a group randomly drawn, drawn from some group family together with um, N random elements, which will generate the group with overwhelming probability by assuming that this n is large enough. 
The strong algebraic group model was introduced by Katz, Loss, and Xu in 2020, and it's defined as follows. And its first three is called strongly algebraic if it has one or more output rounds in which for each of the elements that it outputs in this round, it also outputs some sort of elementary representation of this element. And this elementary representation is either um, a representation as x of a product, x1 times x2, or um, a representation of x as x1 inverse, where x1 and x2 are elements that the adversary either received in an earlier round or uh, computed itself in an earlier round. Originally, this uh, model was introduced for cyclic groups of unknown semi-prime order, as I said before, for uh, RSA groups. And so in a uh, computational game G, an adversary receives um, the modulus N, um, where this modulus is just sampled from some uh, modulus generating algorithm. And um, then that gives the adversary the ability to work in this um, uh, RSA group. We generalized this model to abelian groups of arbitrary unknown order um, in the same way um, as we did for the AGM such that an adversary at the start of a game receives a random group drawn from some group family and uh, a random set of elements which will generate the group uh, with overwhelming probability. Since most of the reductions that we prove in this work are reductions from the problem of computing a multiple of the group order to some other computational problem, I will for the rest of this presentation mostly focus on the main steps that uh, we took in proving these reductions. And the main ingredient in these reductions is the concept of relations. And relations are an important concept uh, in, for instance, order computation algorithms for uh, finite abelian groups. So if we have a finite abelian group G with some system of generators uh, G1 up to Gn, then a factor E1 up to En out of the integers um, is called a relation for the system of generators if um, raising each generator to the power uh, e, so g1 to the power en times g2 to the power e2 all the way up to gn to the power en, multiplies out to the identity in the group. Then we call such a vector a relation. And the relations for a system of generators form an integer lattice, which we call the relationship lattice. So simple as um, example of this is how a D log one adversary naturally gives rise to relations. So if we sample a random group element with some known representation with respect to this system of generators, and we query a D log adversary on um, this system of generators and this randomly sampled element, um, then if this adversary is successful, then we can just take our representation of this group element and subtract the answer of the adversary from this and in this way, obtain a relation with respect to this system of generators. The relationship lattice for a given system of generators can also be seen as the kernel of a surjective morphism, which maps from z to the power n to the group G, and says so vector e to g to the power e. Um, then if b is a basis for the relationship lattice, then we see in this way that zn modeled out by this basis times z to the power n is isomorphic to the group G. And in particular, that the determinant of this, um, of this basis, of the lattice, is going to be equal to the order of the group. Even more is true, and for the, from the spin normal form of this basis, uh, one can obtain generators h1 up to hk of the group, which have order n1 up to nk, such that we can write G as a direct product of the cyclic subgroups generated by these generators H1 up to HK, and such that N1 divides N2 divides, and et cetera, all the way up to NK. So we get uh, from the spin normal form of this relation lattice, um, the decomposition of this abelian group in terms of its invariance. So this gives us the idea um, to obtain relations from an adversary solving a given computational problem, and then um, try to um, find in this way a basis for the relationship lattice, such that this allows us to compute the group order 
and even the entire structure of this group. However, there's no known efficient way to check if we have in fact found a basis for the full relationship lattice. For this problem, we found the following workaround. If we have a finite abelian group G with some system of generators, uh, small g, and um, the relationship lattice with respect to the system of generators has rank N, um, then any linearly independent set of relations, R1 up to Rn, is going to form a full rank sublattice of this relationship lattice. And in this case, we can also show that the absolute value of the determinant of this system of relations R is going to be an integer multiple of the group G. So in this way, we can use um, an adversary solving some given computational problem G to obtain N in, uh, linearly independent relations with respect to some system of generators, and in this way, obtain a multiple of the order of G, and so solve the multiple order problem. And um, checking if some system of relations is linearly independent um, over the reals or over the, um, over the rationals is easier than checking whether we have found a basis for the entire relationship lattice. So now we can try to turn this idea of collecting linearly independent relations from uh, an adversary solving a computational problem G into an adversary which computes a multiple of the order into um, a more formal uh, sketch of a reduction. Uh, so the idea here, as I said before, is to obtain n linearly independent relations with respect to some system of generators from an adversary solving a computational problem G. And then as we've seen in the previous slide, the determinant of this system of relations is going to be a multiple of the order of G. So the challenges in proving this reduction are, well, the first one, we need to show that we can extract relations from an adversary successfully solving an instance of this computational problem. The second challenge is, is we need to randomize instances of this game such that the adversary succeeds with independent and identical success probability on each instance, such that the adversary succeeds on n out of capital n instances with sufficiently large probability. And finally, that n of these successfully extracted relations will be linearly independent with overwhelming probability. Before we show a bit more formally how we can tackle these um, challenges um, for the reduction of MO to some computational game G, we first need to introduce some more notation. So all computational games G, uh, which we consider are defined with respect to a group family, um, which is indexed by the security parameter, or yeah. Um, and then for every security parameter, uh, we assume that there exists some group order upper bounds, such that for all security parameters and all groups in the group family, the order of the group is upper bounded by uh, this upper bound UK. Furthermore, we assume that the logarithm of this upper bound is polynomial and that one over this upper bound is negligible. And it's reasonable to assume that such an upper bound exists because um, if we have some upper bound on representations of the, of the group elements as, as bits, for instance, then, um, well, two to the power the upper bound on the size of these representations um, is going to be some upper bound on the order of the group. Furthermore, we assume um, that there exists some random group generator count which is polynomial in the security parameter, such that um, if we sample n uniformly random elements from the group, they will generate the group with uh, overwhelming probability. And we've already seen uh, in the beginning of this presentation that this in particular holds for um, n equal to two times the log of the group order, um, which, uh, which is polynomial by uh, our first assumption on the group order upper bound. Furthermore, we introduced the notation uh, where for some m times n matrix uh, A, we, um, we can raise a system of generators to the power of this matrix, by which we mean uh, the tuple, which consists of the elements we obtain by raising the system of generators uh, separately 
to the um, rows or the yeah to the uh, rows of this matrix. And we denote with square brackets um, x square brackets subscript g1 up to gl uh, for a representation of some group element x with respect to some other group elements g1 up to gl. And that is um, some integer representation as, uh, for instance, an uh, algebra group model adversary outputs. Um, and finally, from here on, we assume that the security parameter kappa is fixed and we often omit it for, um, for gravity. So the first challenge for proving our reduction was showing that we can extract relations from uh, an adversary solving some computational game uh, G. And the leading example we will take for the rest of the presentation is an adversary A solving the strong root problem, which, um, which is defined as follows. Um, a random group element is sampled, which is given to the adversary together with um, some uh, system of generators or some randomly sampled system of generators. And the adversary outputs a group element Y together with some integer E. And the adversary wins the game if this E is greater than one, and if Y is an E root of the element X. Now, if we have an algebraic, adversary solving this strong root problem, then we can construct a relation sampler as follows. We sample um, some random um, vector uh, r in the interval one up to u cubed and uh, create the group element x with known uh, representation uh, r from the system of generators g that we have. Then we query the adversary on input, this is some generators G and this group element X, and it returns us an integer E and some group element Y together with a representation of Y in terms of G and X. And we simply call this representation uh, B comma C for future reference here. Now, if the adversary succeeds and correctly outputs an E root of the element X, then we can uh, write all the elements Y and x in terms of this um, system of group elements g and in this way um, return some relation r times one minus c times e minus b times e um, with respect to this um, system of group elements g and if the adversary does not succeed the relation sampler simply aborts. Now we see that the relation sampler succeeds with um, with probability uh, equal to the success probability of the adversary in the strong root game uh, conditioned on the group G and the system of generators G being sampled um, on a single call. But it's difficult to say anything about um, repeated calls with respect to the same uh, group and the same uh, system of generators. So we have to uh, do some extra tricks to um, to get multiple relations out of an adversary solving this strong root problem. So what we can do is we can define the following randomized relation sampler for some algebraic strong root adversary A. Uh, again, the relation sampler takes as input a group G out of this group family and some system of group elements uh, G. Um, but now next to sampling some random element X, um, with respect to this uh, system of elements G, it also samples some random um, new system of generators G tilde with respect to this uh, system of group elements G. Um, and then it gives this new randomized system of generators together with this random group elements to the adversary and um, sort of does the same steps that um, our previous relation sampler does, and in this way um, obtains again a relation with respect to this original system of group elements uh, G. And now what we can see is that um, well if we let B prime uh, subscript uh, group G system of generator G be the success probability of the relation sampler on this specific group and system of elements, then if the group is indeed generated by this system of elements, then we see that, uh, or then we can show that G tilde and X are 
um, at negligible statistical distance to the uniform distribution over this group. And so because of this, um, we know that, um, well, if G tilde and X are indeed uniformly distributed, then they are exactly distributed the way that instances um, in this game, um, in the strong root game are distributed. And so we see that uh, the success probability P prime uh, subscript GG is negligibly close to uh, the average success probability of the strong root adversary uh, conditioned on um, the group G. And um, the event that the group G is not generated uh, by this uh, system of elements G um, only happens with negligible probability over uh, the random sampling of a group from the group family and um, a system of elements from the group. And so um, we will later see that we can um, ignore this event most of the time um, and still uh, obtain a sufficient success probability over multiple calls. So in particular, we see that if the group G is generated by the system of elements G, then each call of the relation sampler has independent and identical success probability. And this is something that we can later use to uh, bound success probability of the relation sampler over uh, multiple calls. Next, we want to determine the uh, total number of calls that we need to um, call the relation sampler on to obtain n relations with a sufficiently large probability. So in other words, um, if we let P be the average success probability of the adversary A, and we define capital N to be SN over P, um, then what is the probability of the, to obtain N relations with respect to uh, the system of generators G from capital N calls to the adversary on randomized instances from the group G? Well, the first observation is that the number of successful calls to uh, this relation sampler has a binomial distribution um, with uh, n samples and success probability p prime. Um, and on the previous slide, we saw that if um, this, these elements g in fact generate the whole group, then we saw that this probability p prime was negligibly close to this probability p sub g. And um, since we're only doing um, a polynomial number, capital N, of calls, these binomial distributions also have negligible statistical distance to each other. Um, in lemma 2.6 of our work, we show using a turnoff bound that if we have a random variable, which is distributed uh, binomially with n samples and success probability pg, then the probability over a random choice of g that um, that we sample n successes from this binomial distribution is greater or equal to p over two times one minus e to the power minus n times cs, where cs is this expression in s, which is positive and grows as s, s grows. So finally, using this, we see, we can conclude that out of Sn over P randomized calls to our adversary A, we can successfully extract N relations with probability greater or equal to P over two times one minus e to, the, e to the power minus N times Cs minus some negligible difference. And so what remains to show is that um, N successfully extracted relations will be linearly independent with overwhelming probability. So looking again at the relation samples that we obtained from this algebraic strong root adversary A, we see that if the adversary outputs an element Y, which is an E root of the element X, then we, accept, then we obtain relations of this form uh, R times one minus CE minus BAE um, with respect to uh, the system of generators G. Um, and so looking at these coordinate Ys for the generator GJ, we get the following expression. Um, and now if we split these random um, coefficients rj that we sampled to uh, generate our random element x, which is the challenge element we gave 
to the adversary A, um, we see that if we split this element RJ um, as the residue of RJ modulo the order of the generator plus the multiples of the order of the generator that are uh, present in this coefficient RJ, then we see that all the group elements that we give to the adversary A only depend on this residue, our prime J. And so finally, the output of this adversary is going to be independent of the R prime prime J um, or independent of the multiples of this um, order of this generator that are present in this, um, in this random coefficient. Um, and so the idea here is that if we sample this Rj from some large enough interval, then the R prime prime J randomly shift the relationship coefficients along this relationship lattice. And so we can use this to show that the relations we ultimately obtain from this adversary will be uh, distributed close to a uh, uniform. So to show that these relationship coefficients are in the indeed going to be distributed randomly, we can do the following. We can pick a prime between uh, the group order defined by two and the group order, which is co-prime to of this one minus CE. And since the adversary needs to output uh, a non-trivial root, it needs to output an E greater than one. So these terms one minus CE are going to be unequal to one. Then we can expand these relationship coefficients as the term R prime prime J times uh, something which is co-prime to this prime plus R prime J times something that is independent of R prime prime J uh, plus some other term which is independent of the R prime prime J. And then we show in our work that sampling uh, these coefficients randomly uh, uniformly from some large enough interval U cubed, then the distribution of these R prime prime modulo uh, this prime p uh, conditioned on any value of the r primes in the interval a zero up to the order of this generator, um, then this distribution has negligible statistical distance to the uniform distribution um, on z p to the power n. Um, so what we can see is that since these r prime prime j are going to be negligibly close to the uniform distribution, then if these were distributed uniform, and we would multiply them by something go prime and add some independent terms to it and some, um, yeah, add some independent terms to it, then these relationship coefficients will still be distributed um, uniform modulo p. So if r prime prime j is distributed close to uniform modulo p, then these whole relationship coefficients will also be distributed negligibly close to uniform modulo p. Um, so ultimately, we obtain some relation d1 up to dn, such that the reduction of this relation modulo p is distributed negligibly close to the uniform distribution on zp to the power n. So now we have shown that we can obtain relations d1 up to dn which are distributed negligibly close to uniform modulo p or some prime p, which lies between the group order and the group order divided by two. From this, we can deduce that the probability that the determinant of these, um, of these relations, uh, of this system of relations is going to be congruent to zero modulo p is smaller than n over p plus some negligible, um, some negligible statistical distance because um, for uniformly distributed uh, d1 up to the n, the probability that the determinant is going to be congruent to zero modulo p can easily be shown to be smaller than n over p. And since we pick this prime p greater than g over 2, we see that this probability is smaller than 2n over the order of the group plus some negligible uh, distance. And since we assumed n to be polynomial and the order of the group is super polynomial, uh, this probability is going to be at most negligible. Um, and what we can use now is that the probability that the determinant of this system of relations is going to be equal to zero is smaller or equal than the probability that the determinant of this system of relations is going to be congruent to zero modulo p. Um, and so we see that 
um, finally see that n successfully extracted relations are going to be linearly independent with overwhelming probability, which is exactly um, what we wanted to show. So coming back to the overview of our reduction um, sketch for uh, the reduction of the multiple order problem to some computational problem G, we have shown through our example um, of a strong root of reduction of MO to the strong root problem that we can tackle all of these challenges um, for this particular, uh, for, for a particular strong root adversary. But in fact, um, most of our reductions for other computational problems follow a very similar uh, sort of template as, as I've shown in this presentation, and only on some uh, specific parts of the challenges, there are some, some individual details that are different for each problem and, and where we have to pay a bit of attention to show that everything goes well. But so what we have shown now finally is that we can obtain a multiple of the group order with probability greater than the average success probability of the adversary A times uh, this term one minus e to the power minus n times cs over two up to some negligible terms. And then we can do so in time at most sn over p times the average running time of the adversary A up to some significant terms. So, so we succeeded in showing this, this uh, reduction of the multiple order problem to, uh, to in this case, this strong root problem. And so now we have shown that we can obtain a multiple of the order from, from certain adversary solving uh, computational problems G. It's a natural to, question to ask, uh, in which cases we can also obtain the exact order of the group from these adversaries. And what we show in our work is that for cyclic groups of hidden order, we can obtain the exact order from some standard model adversary solving the discrete logarithm problem. And that is that the hidden order problem reduces to the D log problem in this case. Um, and, and to prove this, we use um, a technical theorem which, prove, which we prove, um, which, um, which has something about the greatest common divisor of some uniformly distributed random variables, which are uh, shifted by some, um, some, some integer uh, bounded shifts. And that uh, in this case, still the, these, um, these shifted random variables are going to be, um, are going to be co-prime with large probability. Now, it's still an open question if this reduction in fact generalizes to abelian groups. So if you can show that the hidden order problem reduces to, for instance, the D log one or the D log two problems for uh, abelian groups of hidden order. And we furthermore note that for computational problems G, which actually reduce to the multiple order problem, we do not expect a reduction from the hidden order problem to this particular problem G uh, to be possible. Um, and this is because any adversary that can solve a G can solve this problem G by always restricting to a strict sub-lattice of the relationship lattice. And um, on the other hand, knowledge of the full lattice is required to solve this hidden order problem. So uh, this is a bit of the intuition that we have why this isn't possible, but this isn't really something that we made formal in our work. So to recap, in our work, we formalized um, the, the abelian hidden order standard model, abelian hidden order algebraic group model, and abelian hidden order strong algebraic group model, um, so that these computational models are suitable for the study of abelian groups of hidden order. An important part of this was to adapt the definition of cryptographic problems to sample a random group from a group family and a random set of generators at the start of the game. And of course, to not give the order of the group to any adversary playing a particular game. Um, furthermore, we studied relations between cryptographic problems in abelian hidden groups, in abelian groups of hidden order in these models. Um, and so in the abelian hidden order standard model, we've shown that the multiple order problem reduces to the D log one and the D log two problem. And uh, it follows from Shoup's uh, impossibility result that no efficient generic reductions exist in the opposite direction. Um, in the abelian hidden order algebraic group model, we've shown that the multiple order problem is equivalent to the 
E root problem, the LO problem, the strong root problem, and the adaptive root problem um, under some additional conditions for the E root and the LO problem. And we've shown that the MO problem reduces to the CDH2 problem. And all of these we've shown using our new template for extracting random independent relations from algebraic adversaries, which I um, gave a sketch of in the uh, earlier part of this presentation. And finally, um, we've shown in the abelian hidden order strong algebraic group model that the multiple order problem is equivalent to the repeated squaring problem. And uh, the, the way to show this is similar to how we showed the other reductions in the algebraic group model, but using that uh, adversary uses some bounded depth algebraic circuit instead of an algebraic representation for its output group elements. So finally, for some open questions, one open question I mentioned before is, is it possible to reduce the hidden order problem to D log one and D log two for abelian groups? And so some questions that arise here are, is there a way to check that the obtained relations um, actually generate the full lattice in an efficient way? Or can we guarantee that several independently obtained multiples of the order have greatest common divisor equal to the exact order with high probability. And that is sort of the approach that worked for us in the, uh, in the cyclic case, but which is still uh, open in the abelian case. And moreover, an interesting um, uh, question to look at is when a reduction of D log to CDH is possible in the hidden order algebraic group model. And some earlier works showed that this is possible for cyclic groups of known prime order in the AGM. Um, and some seminal works by Mauder and Wolf in 1998 showed that this is possible for cyclic groups of known order uh, in the generic group model if all multiple prime factors of the group order are polynomial in the uh, logarithm of the group order. And they also showed that no generic reduction exists when the group is cyclic and the group order is divisible by B squared for some large prime P. Thanks a lot for uh, tuning in to this recorded talk. And if you're interested to learn more about their work, I want to refer you to their a full version, which is up on ePrint. And uh, if you have any questions remaining, feel free to send me an email at uh, my CWI email address, which is uh, mentioned here. Thanks.